everybody, Zach again, NewTutorial.com, coming and making a video for you today. I got an email, actually it was a message I think sent through Facebook, and it was a video that uh, someone sent me and wanted to know my thoughts on it. I assume, I, in fact I know that the person who sent me the video is um, Orthodox Jew, and uh, she often sends me things I think to attempt to chip away at my uh, faith in uh, the Bible um, and the validity of the New Testament. And so this was a Tobias Singer uh, video. So I got the video. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And so I watched the video. Um, I guess I was bored today. And so I'm like, oh, this is great. This is right up my alley. So I'll do a video on it. So that's what I'm here to do today. So we're going to show you the first clip. It's a question about clean and unclean and uh, can what an animal eats render that animal unclean and then he goes off into an entire diatribe on the non-validity of Paul and how Paul butchers the the scriptures in the Torah and so this is going to be a fun ride here's the first clip it doesn't make a difference what feed you give animals that are clean the term kosher is not the term it's our conventional term but what is clean animals doesn't make a difference. If let's say um, a goat eats, I don't know, eats insects, does that render what the animal eats? Does that render the animal unkosher? Now it should be or unclean. So the original question from, uh, I didn't want to subject you to the original question from the caller um, because he, was, he took a very long time to get to the point. Really what he was asking is the feed that you give to an animal, does that feed render that animal unclean? And Tovia, I think, misses where this caller wanted to go um, and uses the whole idea, well, if a goat is out there eating grass and he ingests an insect while eating that grass, does that make the goat unclean? No, it doesn't. Um, the issue is I think Tovia completely missed the point of the caller because there is a gigantic raging debate on Facebook and other social media outlets right now on determining whether or how you feed your animals, your kosher animals, farm-raised animals, whether it be ca uh, cattle, sheep, goats, whatever, um, because most of the feed that is available today, not all, there's a lot of good other varieties out there, but most of the feed today is all G GMO. It's genetically modified feed. Okay, feed that has been altered in the laboratory, the strains of that feed has been altered uh, to produce more of it, to be round up ready, to be able to use Monsanto and other type of chemicals, herbicides, um, you know, stuff, stuff like that on, the, on that feed as it grows. And is that kosher because you're basically, it's been proven that you're ingesting that stuff and it's showing up in the feed, in the animals, and then when you eat the animals, into you. So is that still kosher? Because, you know, they're using genetic, I mean, because they're using the genetics of all kinds of different things. They're using the genetics of non-kosher animals to alter this grain, this feed that they're giving to kosher animals. Does that make it unclean? Uh, so he misses that point entirely. My opinion is, no, this absolutely does not. Um, and he says this doesn't matter. So let me ask you this. If you go to Israel, you can find a kosher McDonald's, a kosher McDonald's. You can go to Israel, find a kosher McDonald's, and you can eat there every single day if you want to. I mean, it's up to you. You can go there and you can eat at the kosher McDonald's every single day. Do you think you're going to be healthy for that? I'm just saying. So, you know, if you're even if the GMO feed that you're giving the animals isn't been spliced gen genetically by with some unclean animal, um... Does that, even if, even if you're eating, and yeah, listen, folks, a cow is not meant to eat grain every single day. It's meant to eat grass. But there are a lot of these places, these feedlots are feeding their, you know, cattle, sheep, whatever, the stuff you buy at the store, grain every single day. It's fast food for an animal. It's not healthy for an animal. Okay, so that aside, I don't think that, you know, the uh, meat at the store, even though it may be kosher, um, you know, it's not something that you should be eating all that often. What I think you ought to be doing is raising your own food, if possible, and eating that because you know what goes into the animal. Here on our homestead, we know what kind of, uh, I'm getting the kind of grain or the kind of, I know that mostly they're all grass-fed. We, we have pastures here, so I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. And uh, when we do feed a lot of alfalfa, um, the alfalfa I know is not, not GMO. So um, anyway, all that aside, let's go on to our next clip. Uh, no clean animal is a carnivore. No clean animal even is omnivorous, like a dog 
or bear, which are animals that can eat both plant life and eat uh, other animals. So by definition, it is built in to God's plan that all clean animals are herbivorous. All clean animals only eat plant life. So he makes the statement that all clean animals are herbivores. They are not omnivorous, they're not carnivores, when actually that's absolutely not the case. Um, obviously we, uh, I mean, fish, fish eat other fish, fit, fish eat, there are fish out there. I have raised bluegill uh, on my property here and bluegill will absolutely eat algae, which is a plant, and they will also eat insects and other fish. Um, so, you know, right there, you know, but he, he, he may come back and say, well, I was just talking about land animals. Well, if that's the case, he didn't specify birds, fowl. We know chicken. Chickens will absolutely eat insects. They will eat mice. They will eat their, themselves. They will also eat plants. They'll eat lots of plants, but they'll also eat animals. Okay. Turkeys will do the same thing. Quail. Quail can, can eat insects and eat plants. Quail, actually, if you look it up, will, will also be, are also cannibals. Uh, under certain circumstances, even in the wild. Uh, so I looked that up when I, before I made the video because I know a lot of fowl, clean fowl, are, you know, cannibals. They are omnivores. They eat insects, animals, and plants. Um, you know, I, mostly they prefer grains and plants, but they will eat other animals. Chickens will, will absolutely devour uh, meat if you give it to them. So um, if he comes back and says, well, Zach, you know, you know, it's just talking about land animals, you know, those who have to chew the cud and split hoof. Well, you didn't specify. You're talking about animals. And so I think this is someone listening to this is going this is see, this is why we have people out there saying, well, we shouldn't be eating chickens because Rabbi Tobias Singer says all animals, all clean animals are supposed to be, um, you know, herbivores. But that's not the case. It's not the case. And we know that the Israelites ate quail. Chicken really isn't mentioned in scripture, but we know they ate quail, and quails are just as much as cannibals as chickens. Chicken or quail will eat insects just like they will eat plants. So, I mean, it's, it's it, I think there's a, a certain amount of ignorance on the part of Tovia here. Um, and let's be honest here. Tovia lives in Queens, New York. Queens, New York City. Get out of the city once in a while. Come out to the country. Live here for a couple years. Get a real grasp on the creation of our father and see what he's doing. See how he built his creation and then, you know, apply the scriptures to it. Let's go to our next clip. And therefore, we are. it is forbidden in the Torah to cause an animal any kind of stress, to cause any kind of suffering to a creature. This, this right here is a common argument I hear from a lot of Orthodox Jews. Uh, this is also on many Orthodox Jewish websites. They will say that you are not allowed to hunt because by hunting, you're causing that animal stress. You're causing that animal pain and suffering. And that's not allowed. You're not allowed to do that. And they use Deuteronomy 25 for all, not to even mention that in Leviticus, it gives you explicit instructions. If you do hunt, you can hunt. It gives the children of Israel the ability to hunt. But let's go ahead and read the verse from Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 25, 25, verse 4, you shall not muzzle the ox when he treads out the corn, or in some variations it says when he's on the threshing floor or such. Does it say anything in that verse about suffering? Does it say anything in that verse about stress? No. It says you shall not muzzle the ox when he treads out the corn. You see, and it's, this is completely lost on people because they've never been in a farming community. They've never been in a farming mindset. They don't understand how grain is harvested. When they would tread out the, or thresh out the corn or thresh out the grain, the ox would not be muzzled so that he could get his share. He could eat while he's working. It's the same with lots of animals. You don't, you know, you want your animal because it's a working animal. You want the animal to enjoy their job. You know, you want them to look forward to coming to the threshing floor because if he starts fighting you, now you have an animal that you can't use for anything. The animal's purpose is to be used on the threshing floor so that you can get your grain. It's the same with milk cows. You have a milk cow, you bring the milk cow to the milking stand and you feed the milk cow. I have lots of friends who have milk cows. We have our own milk cow, we're waiting for our first calf. But all of the people I know who have milk cows, they feed their milk cow when it comes time to milking that day or an hour twice a day. You feed, you want the animal to look forward to come to the job it's required to perform. And so you feed it. That's what that verse is talking about. It has nothing to do with suffering. It has nothing to do with stress. Again, again, we have a rabbi who lives in Queens, New York. 
who's I mean, I, I say I say this often. So when you know, in my agricultural study series that I have, uh, that I give lectures on when I go and travel. Um, do you think that a cab driver who lives in New York City will ever understand the lifestyle of a cattle rancher who lives in Texas? No, of course not. But do you think that cattle rancher living in Texas will ever understand fully the lifestyle of the cab driver living in New York City? No, absolutely not. So why on earth would we all live in the city and then try to put our understanding on the scriptures of a bunch of people who lived in agriculturally based lifestyle? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, the prof, most of the prophets all lived an agricultural based lifestyle. So how on earth would you try to apply your understanding of life to them and not come up with errors? Lots of them. Okay, let's keep going. Here's the next clip. In Jewish law, if you own a pet, you have a dog. If you come home, you're hungry, your dog's hungry. Guess who has to be fed first? The dog. In Jewish law, if you own a pet, you have a dog. If you come home, you're hungry, your dog's hungry. Guess who has to be fed first? The dog. Ladies and gentlemen, does it say anything about a dog in Deuteronomy 25 verse 4? Okay, I'm just, I was just I was just checking because I wanted to make sure. Okay, look, next clip. As it turns out, Paul, this great luminary of the Jewish people, what would we ever do without him? Paul completely misquotes this passage in 1 Corinthians 9. In 1 Corinthians 9.9, 9, Paul, he says it's written in the law of Moses, meaning the Torah, that you shouldn't, he quotes Deuteronomy 25 verse 4 that you shouldn't muzzle an ox when it's threshing. And he asks the question, do you think that God is concerned with oxen? Do you hear that? Paul takes it a commandment in Torah to be kind to an animal and to not cause a stress. And when, you, when the animal is, is pulling the plow and an animal is working the field, you can't put a muzzle on it. It's rachmanus, it's mercy to the animal. And this great giant of the Jewish people goes, no, it doesn't mean that at all. Or is he speaking altogether of our sake? Chapter 9, verse 10. He, Paul displays great ignorance of the Hebrew Bible. He's talking about Paul, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 9. It says, For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? Or does it, he say altogether for our sakes? So Tovia here is very upset. And by the way, you know, this whole video that he created was a simple question about, you know, clean and unclean. Is an animal clean, you know, if it eats food, you know, this type of food, whatever. But no, that's all it was about. But he can't end the video without, you know, what right one in the one right in the kisser into the uh into the New Testament. You know, you gotta get your gotta get your licks in, right? Right, Tobia? Okay, so even though this had nothing to do with this, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it oxen God is concerned about? So Tobia is upset that Paul is taking this verse out of context because for Tovia and so many other people who have been brainwashed with Disney these days, it's all about the animal suffering. It's all about the, the ox. Is, is he suffering? Is this about, you're, you're basically butchering the Torah because this is about the ox suffering. Is it about the ox or is it about us? Is it about the ox or is it about us? No, it's about you. That's what that commandment was for. That's the reason the father put that commandment in. Let me explain. When you take your ox out and you allow him to eat the grain, have his part on the threshing floor, you have an ox that's willing to come to work every day because he knows that he's going to get some grain, whereas normally he's eating grass or in the wintertime eating dry hay. But no, on work days, on days when I go to work, I get grain. And whoa, that's like fast food. That's like my, that's like my McDonald's. So he wants to come to work every day so that he can get a little bit of that grain and enjoy his work day. And thus he performs better for you, for you. See, it's about your benefit. Let me explain. Take a look at the verses previously in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 7. Check this out. Who goes to war anytime at his own charges? This is what Paul is saying. Yeah, you don't go to war by yourself, do you? No, you go to war as an army, as a group. 
Why? Because if you go to war by yourself, chances are you're not going to come back. It's that simple. Who plants a vineyard and eats not of the fruit thereof? Do you plant a vineyard for the benefit of the grapes? No, you don't plant a vineyard for the benefit of the grapes. You plant a vineyard for your benefit because the grapes are going to give you food and wine. It's for your benefit. Do you feed a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Let's be honest. Do you, do you have a flock just so you can feed the, 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 the feed the sheep? Is it just to the benefit of the sheep that you feed the flock? No, because at some point that flock is going to give you milk. It's going to give you meat. It could give you wool. See, there's a lot of benefit that you get for feeding that flock. Right now I have a milk cow out here and she's six months pregnant. And in three months, she's going to have a calf. And see, I'm feeding that cow. I'm trying to keep that cow healthy and happy so that in three months, I'm going to have a newborn calf at which I can either choose to eat if it's a male. And if it's a female, I can either sell it or add it to my herd and grow my herd. And that, that mom will now produce milk that I can use for butter, for cheese, for yogurt. I can use all that, and we make we do that here on a regular basis. Make cheese, yogurt, and butter, and, and, all, and all this, all the products that you get with milk. See, it's to my benefit to keep that cow happy. I could give a rat's rear end about that cow. It's a, it's an expensive pet. It's a financial burden on me. But see, I keep that cow healthy and happy because I know the benefit that that cow can give me. There are no pets on a homestead. There were no pets back then either. See, again, the Disneyfication of America and the West. They say, oh, yeah, you have these pets because they're people, too. No, they're not. They, on a homestead, on a ranch, in an agricultural-based society, these animals had a purpose that benefited you. And, you and, and the more happy and healthy you keep them, the, ha the more happy and healthy you are. It's the same with the ox. The ox. You tread the ox so that it produces well for you. you know, and the ox, when it goes out into the field and plows a field, you keep it happy, you and healthy. You want it to perform so that it benefits you. The ox was the ancient tractor of the day. I have a tractor. We have a Massey Ferguson tractor here on the homestead. And it's to my benefit that I changed the oil on that tractor. It's to my benefit that I changed the air filter on that tractor to make sure it's well kept, it's kept to make sure it's sheltered so that I don't want it to stay out, outside too long and rust. Every time I'm done operating that tractor, I put a can over the exhaust because if it rains and water gets down in that exhaust, it could seize the engine up. You don't do that. You treat the tractor well so that it performs well. You treat the ox well so that it performs well for your benefit. That's what Paul is saying. That's why the commandments bring life. That's why it brings blessings if you follow them and curses if you don't. The blessing is yours. Your blessing. That's your blessing. Not the ox's blessing. I would, since I'll give you the ox blessings if you follow them. No, I will give you blessings if you follow them and curses if you don't. We have got to stop listening to people, you know, who have never even been on a farm, much less lived on one. Queens, New York. Oh, my goodness. He, Paul displays great ignorance of the Hebrew Bible. Tovia, the only ignorance I see is sitting in Queens, New York. All right, we'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks. Thanks.